Hi, Brenda. Let's see if Sarah logs in. I don't know if she will. Oh, I've got a clock right here. Okay. Oh, that's right. I don't have to project. Oh, I just have to turn something on. I can project. <laughs> I can project. It's just easier to choose not to sometimes. Well, uh, it is 7.01, so the bewitching hour is upon us. Um, welcome. It's good to see so many eyes. <laughs> like, I was about to be like, oh, it's some bright, shining faces. And I'm like, no, just... I see your eyes, but it's good to see your eyes. That's that's wonderful. Welcome. Glad you all decided to come out and join us tonight. Um, so as I've communicated from the pulpit and tried to communicate uh, in the, the various writing as, as far as what we're going to try to accomplish tonight, we're going to try to do two things. We're going to do a lot of the traditional elements of a communion of a well, a Monday Thursday communion service. And then we're also going to just do a little bit of teaching little preparation for what I hope we will do next year on this evening, okay? Uh, and so we're just going to kind of introduce the Seder plate. We're going to introduce some Hebrew, and uh, so that when I start clucking and pushing, you don't get all freaked out. So, um, yes, this is a participatory service, as is usually the case. And so um, if anybody needs, there's, there's extra hymnals on those two tables. If you need to grab a hymnal, there's extra orders of worship over there as well. If you need one of those, and there's an open table here that's got some of those materials. So um, welcome. It's good to see you this evening. Let us worship God. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as the Christ has loved us. Let us love one another. Beloved people of God, this is the day when Christ, our Passover lamb, surrendered himself to those who would kill him, setting us free from sin and death forever. This is the day when Christ, our teacher and Lord, knelt down to wash the disciples' feet, showing us how to love and serve one another. This is the day when Christ, the bread of heaven, shared a holy meal with his followers offering a feast of abundant life and grace for all. Let us pray. O oh God, your love is embodied in Jesus Christ, who washed disciples' feet on the night of his betrayal. Wash us from the stain of sin, so that in hours of danger we may not fail, but follow your Son through every trial, and praise him always as Lord and Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Uh, an upper room did our Lord prepare. Please join with us in singing.
The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God with confidence. Therefore, in faith and penitence, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Eternal God, whose covenant with us is never broken, we confess that we fail to fulfill your will. Though you have bound yourself to us, we will not bind ourselves to you. In Jesus Christ, you serve us freely, but we refuse your love and withhold ourselves from others. We do not love you fully or love one another as you command. In your mercy, forgive and cleanse us. Lead us once again to your table and unite us to Christ, who is the bread of life and the vine from which we grow in grace. Lord God, hear us now as we confess our sin before you. This Monday, Thursday evening, we're going to continue in our confession with the singing of the Kyrie before we receive pardon. of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. May the God of mercy who forgives you all your sins strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. And since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Amen. Oh, I didn't include the prayer for well, Let us pray, prayer for illumination. Let us pray. Eternal God, by your word and spirit, you've given us a new commandment to love and serve one another in Jesus' name. Let the good news of your liberating love be sealed in our hearts and shown in our lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So as discussed, what we're going to do for the sermon, before I get to scripture reading, what we're going to do for the sermon is that we're just going to give you an overview of what the Seder is and uh, what the Seder plates are. So we don't need to bring the Seder plates out yet. Just hold on. Um, what I want to do is I do want to give you an overview. So, for example, um, and it's good that we're just kind of doing a cursory introduction this night. So Sarah, for the youth last night at Logos for the junior high and high school, she went ahead and tried to do the whole thing without the meal, obviously. We didn't make dinner for them. Um, but just going through the Seder took like an hour, and we kind of rushed it. So <laughs> I was talking to uh, Linda about that and some of the other faith team that gathered. So we're going to probably think about doing, you know, maybe two hours next year when we do this to have the whole Seder and, and then the meal and make sure everybody gets fed and all that good stuff. So um, just the intro today. But I did want to give you just an overview again so you can kind of hear and be like, oh, this is what I can anticipate next year. Um, so the Seder, um, obviously, number one, is going to be that, you know how we always talk about, you know, 
Jesus the, on the night that he was betrayed, right? He had a meal before with his, it's this. This, this is what he was doing. <laughs> so um, they were in the middle of Passover. Uh, the Jews had gathered, so the, uh, they had all come to Jerusalem. So those who were in the diaspora had come back to Jerusalem. And, and that's why Jerusalem was packed with people. So there wasn't just uh, the folks that gathered on Palm Sunday. Um, but I mean, it wasn't just the residents. It was people coming in from out of town and all those folks. So there were a lot of Jews in Jerusalem at the time that all this occurred with Jesus. Also, I'll be asking session, but Seder, because, you know, being a good Jew, includes wine. So uh, we'll have to ask session and see if we can have some wine out here next year for the Seder or grape juice, because we want it to be intergenerational. We want the kids to come and participate. Um, and so we'll get the grape juice going for the kids too. Um, you know, so that'll be good. But um, that is uh, you know, the, the wine, the, the, the fruit of the vine, the wine or the grape juice is a really important part. Throughout the Seder, you will drink from the cup four different times when we do it next year. So there will be four different blessings. Well, you'll drink three times. We'll say a blessing over the fruit of the vine four times. Um, and so that is definitely part of, uh, the, of, of, of the ritual of the meal. Um, so the, uh, it, you'll also do a couple of ceremonial hand washings. And so we'll have to have that all prepared for you all, a couple of ceremonial hand washings that uh, the second time includes a lovely little prayer. Um, and so I'll probably teach that to you next year and you can try it in Hebrew. It's not hard, but you don't have to. You can say it in English, that's fine, that works too. You will hear, well, I'll get to that later. Um, and so I'll go over a little bit of um, some of the, 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 the order right now before I get to the reading because it'll make sense in a second. So the, it always starts out with the, uh, the Kadesh, which is the first blessing over the fruit of the vine. And then we have Rechatz, which is the washing of hands. Then they do this interesting thing, which we will do tonight because we're going to celebrate, you know, because we're going to do the Seder plate. They do Karpas, and so I'll explain that when we get to it this evening. Uh, then they have Yachatz, and then Magid. And the Magid is the retelling of the Exodus story. So that's what our reading, that's why I paused and didn't go immediately into our reading. Because that's just, I'm like, oh, well, we sure, we got that story. We can read that, no, <laughs> no problem. Um, and so uh, we'll do that as well. Uh, after the telling of the story of the Exodus is the uh, Rahatza, which is hand washing again. Then we bless and eat the matzah. And we'll review why the matzah is important as part of the escape from Egypt. Then we'll do the mar, which is another, uh, we'll do that tonight. So I'll tell you more about the mar tonight. Then we'll do the korek, korek, which is also something we'll do tonight, so I'll explain that more later. That's all before we actually eat the meal. So all that is done before dinner is actually served. So then we eat, and then after we eat, we do something called the uh, zafun, which is finding the afikomen, um, and uh, that'll be a fun, that's a little fun thing for the kids, so um, Harlow may enjoy going on a scavenger hunt throughout the church, looking for the afikomen. And then there's lots of singing at the end. So be prepared, Miss Holly. We may, we probably won't sing in Hebrew because I don't know the tunes. <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll sing some stuff we're familiar with. How about that instead? Okay. All right, so that's the, that's the general overview. And like I said, um, you know, all that first stuff up to the core takes place before the meal and then there's still stuff to do after the meal. So. Hopefully you will come and join me, and I think it'll be a nice experience, and I think it'll be fun. Um, you know, we've now done it as the just the five of us, our family, for the last two years, three years. Sarah's not watching, so I can't get ahead enough from her. But either which way, we've done it a few times now, and this has been a really helpful, uh, yeah, a seder for curious kids and their grown-ups. So this has been really helpful for us and for our use. Okay. Uh, so let's do our scripture reading, which is a review of the Exodus story. So I'm going to start in Exodus 2, and this is just a very brief review. <laughs> Exodus 2, 23 to 25. Let's all now listen for the word of the Lord. During those many days, the, the king of Egypt died, 
and the people of Israel groaned because of their slavery and cried out for help. Their cry for rescue from slavery came up to God, and God heard their groaning. And God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. God saw the people of Israel, and God knew. Exodus 12, 1-20. I am who I am, said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt. This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons, according to what each can eat. You shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, one year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted on the fire, with unleavened bread and bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not, eat, do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it, its head with its legs and its inner parts. And you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And on all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am who I am. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord. Throughout your generations, as a statute forever, you shall keep it as a feast. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall remove leaven out of your houses. For if anyone eats what is leavened from the first day until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. On the first day you shall hold a holy assembly, and on the seventh day a holy assembly. No work shall be done on those days, but what everyone needs to eat, that alone may be prepared by you. And you shall observe the Feast of Unleavened Bread, for on this very day I brought your hosts out of the land of Egypt. Therefore you shall observe this day throughout your generations as a statute forever. In the first month, from the fourteenth day of the month at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread until the twenty-first day of the month at evening. For seven days no leaven is to be found in your houses. If anyone eats what is leavened, that person will be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he is a sojourner or a native of the land. You shall eat nothing leavened. In all your dwelling places, you shall eat unleavened bread. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Okay, let's grab those sacred plates and bring them out for people. So the way that the Seder is really helpful to more whole, more holistically flesh out, fill out, add depth and substance to Maundy Thursday, to our faith as Christians, is that what we as Christians are do is we're invited, as I talked about on Sunday, we're invited to navigate this tension between celebration, Palm Sunday, celebration, Easter, <laughs> but, but there's a week in between in which horrors occur. And you may have observed throughout your lifetimes that at least in my living memory, we're not, we're not too keen on engaging the hard stuff. We'd rather just kind of go from happy to happy to joy to joy. Fair enough, I understand that. And yet we see both within our 
Christian tradition and within the Seder, our, our, you know, our Jewish forebears, that there is intentionality. There is intentionality in engaging the hard stuff, in remembering not just that, you, that they escaped from Egypt, but remembering the bitterness of their slavery in Egypt. You know? And so then we, as Christians in our Holy Week services, we are called to remember, you know, it's not just that Jesus entered the triumphant and then resurrected from the grave triumphant. It's that he had to endure betrayal, mocking, scorn, derision, torture. And so it's like, oh gosh, Eddie, you're such a downer. No. I'm not trying to be a downer, but I am trying to get you to contemplate of your own accord. You know, why, why, <laughs> why, why, why do we need the hard? Why do we need the anguish before we can have the joy? Yeah, sure, I'll take one so I can talk through it. <clears throat> Thanks. Oh, that's there. Okay. Um, so that's, that's part of what you're invited to do tomorrow. And so I'll just push that really quick. Um, you know, I, I preached on Sunday, so I kind of, I, I, I talked a little bit about my thoughts on why we have to do the hard stuff, you know, as well as the good stuff. So you don't need to hear from me anymore. You need to do your own contemplation, your own thoughts, your own work. And so that's part of the reason that we're doing Good Friday the way we're doing Good Friday tomorrow, that we're having those Stations of the Cross. So if you are unfamiliar with the Stations of the Cross, which you might be because it's more of a Catholic tradition, it's 13 stations, and what it does is it literally tracks, you know, it's not all biblical per se, right? So it tracks Jesus's journey from his guilty verdict to the actual cross, like the steps that he took. So we're already done with the betrayal, we're already done with the... the the torture, we're already done with the mocking, we're already done with all that stuff. And he's literally got to now walk and carry the cross of crucifixion up to Golgotha, the place of skulls. And that is a harrowing journey. That is not, a, not an easy journey. And um, so you will be invited when you decide to come anytime from five to nine tomorrow to kind of work your way through those stations there will be plenty of guidance for you, what to think on, what to pray on, all that stuff. There will be a few take-homes for you. And uh, that is your opportunity to do the hard before we get to the joy. Okay. The Seder plate itself. Okay. So one of the first things that we do with the Seder plate is what's called carpus. Okay. Carpus is, again, why do we have to remember the hard stuff along with the good stuff? The Jews were enslaved in Egypt. They were not enjoying their time <laughs> there while they were enslaved. It was bitterness. It was agony. That's why I read the first passage from Exodus 2. God heard. God knew. They cried out. And so the Jews are encouraged annually to remember the bitterness of what their ancestors endured. Okay? And one of the ways they do that is through the carpus. Okay? The carpus is you will take just a little bit of your parsley. You don't need to eat all that. You can just take one little bit off. 
you're going to dip it in your vinegar. And then you're going to wait until after I say the blessing. Don't do it yet. And then you're going to eat that. Parsley dipped in vinegar. Yep, yep. This is the blessing. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam borei pri ha adama. And that means blessed are you, Lord our God, sovereign of the universe, who creates the fruit of the earth. Go ahead, put that parsley in that vinegar and, and reflect on whether or not do you feel like crying? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is that that is just a touch of the bitterness of slavery. And so, yeah, pretty gnarly, not fun. And then, of course. Were we doing the actual Seder, we would do some learning and do some talking and the four questions and all that good stuff. And then the four blessings and the four children and the history and all that good stuff that I already talked about and the retelling of the Exodus story. And then eventually we would get to the Marr. Again, we're dealing with the bitterness <laughs> of slavery. And so the martyr, the Israelites and everyone else who has ever been forced to work without any choice and not get paid for it, suffered a lot. There is no sugarcoating how bad slavery was, which is why when we think about slavery, we don't eat sweet foods. Instead, we eat bitter foods, which remind us of the bitterness of slavery. A tiny bit of their pain is now ours to take in. And speaking of tiny, you only really need a tiny bit of this to experience the bitterness. So again, this will be now the horseradish that you've been given. You don't, oh, no, yeah, you can use the kale. That's fine, kale works. You can use the kale for this one. Hang on, I got a blessing again. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kirishanu b'mitzvata b'zivanu al achilat mar. So blessed are you, Adonai, sovereign of the universe, who makes us holy through your commandments and commands us to eat marr. Go ahead, chomp down on that kale and see how you're still doing. And if you are still <laughs> enjoying the Seder plate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? And these are the, you know, again, like these are our ancestors too, you know, so this is definitely the Jews were forged out of bitterness, out of slavery, you know. This is what Jesus was doing on this night that we celebrate. I mean, doing the same thing. Whoops. And then the other fun thing that we will do for tonight that, um, mm, sloppy. Um, the other fun thing that we will do tonight with the, um, what's on the Seder plate. So uh, I'll read this. Um, a long time ago, there was a great rabbi named Hillel and he thought that being kind was the most important thing, even more important than studying. In fact, he once said, that which is hateful to you, do not do to others. You've heard that before. That sounds exactly like something Jesus said, yeah. So Hillel said, that which is hateful to you, you do not do to others. That is the whole Torah. The rest is commentary. Go and learn. <laughs> Rabbi Hillel had a special Passover tradition. Every Seder, he would make a sandwich out of matzah, which is the little cracker thing you have on your plate, a slice of the sacrificial lamb, and a bitter herb. 
Since Jews do not sacrifice lambs anymore, today we make the sandwich with matzah, haroset, and a bitter herb. And so now we are going to all do the same, but I'm going to say a blessing first. And this time I'm just going to go straight English because it's Numbers 9-11. In memory of the temple, according to Hillel, this is what Hillel would do when the temple existed. He would wrap the matzah and marah and eat them together in order to fulfill what is stated. You should eat it upon matzah and marah So we remember the bitterness, but we're also looking ahead to the sweetness of freedom and all that. So the way that you make your little korek sandwich is you take your matzah and you put some of that apple and apple concoction on there on one slice. That's your uh, haro set. And then you take some, some of that horseradish and put it on the other slice and then you mash it together and have yourself a little sweet and bitter sandwich. kind of weird eating something bitter and sweet together at once, right? But eating this sandwich helps us feel all the complicated feelings of Passover at the same time. The bitter herbs remind us of the bitterness of slavery in Egypt and of our sad memories. The matzah and haroset remind us of the fact that we are free and of our sweet memories. We are not supposed to forget either one. And believe it or not, according to this author anyway, the sandwich is actually pretty tasty. I don't know, what do y'all think? Not too sure. <laughs> Got your nostrils cleared out a little yeah. bit there, uh, Holly. <laughs> yeah. And that is pretty much the extent of the Seder plate. The egg, I think, is there to help some symbolize and remind us of. Um, oh, actually, my, what's it here for? I think it just reminds us of like. Oh, here we go. The egg is um, the betza. The egg represents the animal sacrifices that the Israelites offered to God on holidays, including Passover. Its rounded shape also symbolizes the cycle of life. So. That's what the egg is. Yeah, there's no real ceremonial component of eating the egg, so you can have that at your leisure. The egg is just kind of there as a reminder, like, oh, we used to sacrifice the lamb, and now we don't sacrifice animals anymore. So you can eat that or leave it. Your call, whatever you want to do. So what do we think? Are we going to invite people to join us for the whole shebang next year? Yeah. Oh, don't worry. Yeah, you get the wine in between all the stuff to wash down all the bitterness. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah, you, yeah don't worry, Luthers. You'll be getting a call. <laughs> So, yeah, you do get to wash it down between, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, very good. Well, thank you for indulging me again. This is just a little introduction. 
And by all means, feel free to clean your plate when you're done. The, uh, I mean, you know, eat it all. You don't have to eat parsley, you know, the good stuff. The uh, matzah is pretty good. The haro set is really good. Um, you can leave the horseradish behind. You can, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> But if you want to finish that matzo, it's not too shabby. <laughs> Sarah made fun of me because with uh, I hard boiled too many eggs, and so I made egg salad today for lunch, and we had all our leftover matzo and whatnot. And she took a picture of me because I was just dipping the matzo in the egg salad and eating it like that. And she took a picture of me and sent it to my mother-in-law, her mom, and was like, "Oh, look at Eddie being a good little Jew eating his matzo and egg salad." <laughs> <laughs> well, aren't you a jerk? Okay. Um, so, yeah. And I think I remember from our reading in our book on Monday, we celebrated Seder on Monday, that um, the, uh, let's see, where was it? Oh, shucks. There was something specifically about like a, a, a component of the Seder comes out of the Ashkenazi tradition, which I reminded the children that's where the Ashkenazi tradition is my lineage. So part of the diaspora, good times. So, but yeah, it was, um, yeah, we then I'll, I'll throw this out there too. Sarah and I were watching on uh, Netflix, a four part series just a four mini series, four episode mini series called Unorthodox, which uh, recounted a um, woman's escape from a really hyper conservative um, fundamentalist Jewish group in Brooklyn. And um, in one of their prayers, when they were doing the Seder, they talked about how, yeah, like we have to remember not just the Exodus. But we have to remember all the times that our ancestors have tried to be wiped out. So, and he mentioned like they mentioned the pogroms and stuff, and the Nazis and all that good stuff. And the pogroms um, were in Russia in the 1800s, and not to the extent of the Jews and the Nazi the, the Nazi extermination, but clearly, but persecution. And that's when my ancestors would have bolted and headed out of Russia and they were they headed out to California. So they arrived right around gold rush time, give or take. So anyway, yep. Okay. Well, thank you. For, like I said, thank you for indulging me. Feel free to finish all that or if you haven't already. Um, and uh, we will proceed on with the rest of our service. I invite you to join with me in the prayers of intercession. Liberating and redeeming God, we give you thanks that you hear the cries of your people. Therefore, in our time of trial, we call upon your name, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As you delivered our ancestors from slavery and led them to a land of promise and plenty, Liberate all who are captive or oppressed and bring them to a place of abundant life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. As you saved your people from death on the night of the Passover, redeem us from sin and death through Jesus Christ, the Lamb. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. As Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, stooped down to wash his disciples' feet, teach us to love and serve our neighbors with Christ-like compassion and humility. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As Christ, the Lord, has handed on to us a feast of grace in his body and blood, help us to share with all who hunger the gifts we have received from you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our liberator and redeemer, 
We give thanks that you have heard our cry. Continue to lead us from death to life eternal, and let our lives be a sign of your saving love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to join with us in singing our communion hymn, O Sacred Head Now Wounded, number 98, the Blue Hymnal. The Lord said to Moses, This shall be a day of remembrance for you, and you shall celebrate it as a festival of the Lord. Paul says to the church, As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. night in which he was betrayed, this night, our Lord and Savior took unleavened bread, matzah-like bread, and broke it. And in doing so, he gave it to his disciples and told them, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you.
after the meal, probably about the fourth cup. So they were pretty deep in. He took the cup and he poured it out. And in doing so, he declared to his disciples, this cup is the cup of the, of the new covenant poured out in my blood for the forgiveness of sin. As, as already indicated, the Apostle Paul reminds us that when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we declare Christ's death and resurrection until he comes again. All right, you got your little prefab packets. Go ahead and open the bread and hold it in your hand and I'll bless it once we get everybody in there. Everybody got it? Body of Christ broken for you. Eat of it, all of you. Get the cup ready. Don't drink it yet. The cup of salvation poured out for you. Drink of it, all of you. Let us pray. God of grace, we give you thanks for the feast of redemption that we have shared in the body and blood of our Savior. As you have nourished us with love, let our lives proclaim your great love for the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Thank you for Messiah who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, our Lord, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. That brings us to the conclusion of uh, this part of the service. It continues tomorrow in Good Friday and on your journey to the cross with our Savior doing the prayer walk. Uh, I invite you to remain uh, while we strip the church and uh, you can participate in that if you know I give you the high sign like, hey, come help. Um, <laughs> but otherwise, we'll do it in silence. We're going to go to the narthex and fellowship halls for sanctuary finish.